Hi, it's me again, Crystal, and I am doing my review on the three TED Talks that we were supposed to watch and review. Um, I actually watched more than three of the TED Talks. I really actually enjoyed them. I think this is going to be one of my new favorite websites where I go to find information. I just think these talks are really powerful and amazing. I really like them. So um, anyway, to my reviews of the ones that I decided to review and watch. Um, the first one that I watched was by a young girl named Adora Svitak. And she is actually a 12-year-old girl. Um, the name of hers was What Adults Can Learn From Kids. And this young 12-year-old preteen can honestly speak better and more powerfully and more influentially than a lot of adults that I've ever seen speak. She's really quite amazing and um, she just basically kind of started out her her speech by saying you know the word childish. Why do we use the word childish when we're describing certain people's poor decisions or irrational decisions or or bad decision making or or poor choices why do we use the word childish because it seems that people of all ages make bad decisions or have poor you know poor plans sometimes so you know she kind of pointed out certain things in our history in our history's past certain things that maybe we voted on or that our government has decided to do or um, us voting President Bush, our all-time favorite president, she said, you know, who's who was responsible for that? It wasn't us kids, that was the adults that were responsible for that. So I, I liked the humor that she actually used. And um, she also went on to say, you know, alternatively, that what about certain children that have left, you know, huge legacies like Anne Frank or even children that this present day are raising a great deal of money for really good causes and doing these incredible things that some adults would never do or would never have the courage to do. So why do we, you know, use this term childish when we're describing poor decisions when that's really not necessarily the case? So um, I really liked her speech. She was such a powerful and influential speaker. She made a lot of really good points. She used a lot of examples. Um, she also did some storytelling to kind of um, prove some points and Basically, she kind of thinks that the world could learn from children. Adults can learn from children. Maybe rather than having like a teacher at the head of a class teaching a whole classroom of students, why not have it so the teacher is also embracing and learning from the students as well. It doesn't always have to be a one-way street. Learning can be a two-way street. And oftentimes we can learn from one another. She pointed out how um, children or, or childish thinking often comes with, you know, children just don't have as many limitations in their mind. They ha don't have these limitations set in their mind like, oh, this is going to be too hard for me to do or this is going to be too difficult or, oh, I can't make that or I can't do that. That's impossible. Children have more of an imagination and so she encourages adults to foster that imagination and not only that, but have high expectations for these wild and crazy dreams that, that children have because essentially children are going to be running our, you know, our country, are going to be running the world. These children are our future and so, you know, why not, why not embrace their ideas and encourage their creativity and encourage that childishness that, that maybe all of us should actually kind of be embracing. So, um, that was an awesome speech and um, that was a young girl you know like I said that I did that one on uh, the second one that I'm going to review was actually Franz DeWall and he did one called moral behavior in animals and he was um, <clears throat> excuse me he was actually an elder male um, and he actually started out interestingly enough he actually started out working with animals but the reason for why he actually started working with and studying animals mainly chimpanzees was to actually study uh, their aggression and competition those type of things in animals which people also have but they were studying that and so he started out with the viewpoint of there was a lot more aggression a lot more competition in the animal kingdom and 
while he was studying this, he was studying the, st the chimpanzees and he gave an example of how, you know, he watched the chimpanzees kind of uh, compete with one another. And then after they were done, they would show signs of reconciliation, which is kind of like how humans do. And he thought that was so interesting and that they, that they actually were compassionate and empathetic and um, that they actually reconcil reconciled after getting into a fight by maybe one chimpanzee would put his hand out to help the other one up after a fight or let's say go up and put his arm around the other one or give him a hug or something but it's like they kind of make up after they fight which is very very interesting and not a lot of animals do things like that um let's see there is a he went there was a few other studies that he he kind of described actually and um Another one was about like teamwork and um, can animals be capable of, of teamwork and working together and cooperation and he actually talked about an experiment that was done in 1937 I believe so nearly a hundred years ago and in this experiment they um, had a couple chimpanzees and there was a crate with food that was outside of their gate and it was too heavy for one chimpanzee to pull the rope to get the crate to them with the food. So obviously both chimpanzees had to pull on the ropes to get the crate of food to them. And it was interesting because when they were both hungry, they were both working together and they even actually were pulling the rope at the very same time. It showed like immense cooperation and teamwork. And then they changed the study up a little bit and what they did, <laughs> excuse me, and what they did again, um, here is they actually fed one of the chimpanzees before they did the same experiment and so in this experiment it was kind of interesting as well because they were working together a little bit but the chimpanzee that had already ate he didn't care too much to help so he kept kind of getting distracted and walking away but the chimpanzee that was hungry and was still pulling was kind of like hey buddy come over here you know he kept patting him on the shoulder, grabbing him and pulling him over and sure enough that chimpanzee would kind of reluctantly sit down and start pulling again, start helping again, you know. And it, it just was so interesting to watch. He didn't want to help as much because he wasn't really hungry but yet they still kind of worked together and cooperated and um, the speaker actually was saying that that different studies like that and that study actually kind of showed that you know sometimes maybe they would do things for one another almost as like a favor like if I help you out now you might help me out later type of thing like they see that within chimpanzees and even with other animals there was a study done with elephants that was similar and um, I just I just found that to be really interesting um, he pretty much he he touched on basically um, let's see another thing was uh, about the you know the empathy of animals can can animals be empathetic and he discusses two types of empathy which is synchronization and compassion or comforting and like a synchronization part of empathy would be like let's say somebody yawns and so you know another person yawns and that happens in chimpanzees as well a chimpanzee yawns or they show them a, uh, a TV screen with a chimpanzee yawning and then the chimpanzee yawns or something like that and um, the other the other type of empathy is, is comfort and they show that you know maybe when when one animal is having a bad day or something bad happens they'll come and comfort them by you know um, coming up and, and actually consoling them, putting their arm around them, hugging them, things like that. So um, it, it was really very interesting and he did have a lot of good examples, a lot of good stories. Um, it was just really interesting to see just how similar we really are to animals without maybe knowing how similar we are to animals. Um, the third one that I did was actually by a man called Pranav Mystery, and the name of his was The Thrilling Potential of Sixth Sense Technology. Now, this one was just incredible. This was a jaw-dropping, a jaw-dropping one for me to watch, really. Um, it was a little bit harder for me to understand. This was kind of like a, more, more of a younger, a young man, maybe mid-20s, early 30s. But he had, um, I, th I think he was like like Indian, Middle Eastern maybe, so his accent made it a little bit difficult to, to understand fully what he was saying. But he was an excellent speaker, and 
not only did the, did the accent make it a little difficult, but just he was throwing so much technological information at you that like it was hard for your mind to really understand it. I watched the thing like three times just because I couldn't believe some of the stuff that he was actually showing or explaining in, in this speech of his. Excuse me. Um, his main idea is basically that we should, you know, take objects and gestures and basically look at how we use them and maybe incorporate them, basically incorporate them into our our digital world and take our digital world and incorporate that into into our real life. Like so, for example he in the beginning the first thing that he did uh, you know was when we had the original mouses that were connected to your computer he he thought well if I have a mouse I can use why couldn't I take the components of the mouse and use my hand as a mouse instead and so he ended up taking apart you know four or five mouses and he took all the parts and he actually made some type of glove device where and now instead of using a mouse his hand actually acted as the mouse anything he did with his hand actually would come up on the computer screen and it was just so incredible um, another thing that he did was uh, he created a two-dimensional pen where like you basically could take a pen up to a computer screen and you draw let's say a box but you could also stretch it one way or another so it was just I mean it's hard to even explain a lot of this stuff is so hard to explain because the visuals actually make it easier to understand um, let's see another thing the, the one the biggest thing that he kind of went on to talk about was um, you know we carry around cell phones we carry around all of this stuff cameras cell phones and why not make it so that we can um, actually use this stuff without having to carry around all these devices and so he actually came up with some type of, uh, you know, some type of technology, and it looked like nothing like a little band-aid that went around your finger or went around all of your fingers, something like that. And with this technology, it, it was just incredible. He could do everything from, let's say he wanted to, um, you know, let's say draw up a chart or draw up a picture. He could find any white wall, any door, anything he wanted to start drawing on, start drawing on it, actually be able to see it because there's cameras and things all attached in this little device and then he could take it and take it home with him or you know and if you want to take a picture instead of pulling your camera out you just kind of snap a picture with your hands you point at it and there you have a picture it's just incredible um let's see or um it showed another thing where um you want to make a phone call well all of a sudden this one little band-aid looking technological piece on your hand brings up an actual digital pad on your hand and so it showed him dialing out a number and making a phone call it's like something you would see in the new total recall movie it's just so fascinating and um let's see the other thing the final things that i thought were really crazy too it, then uh, again this is something that's just hard to explain it's like he basically is designing the stuff where let's say you pick up a newspaper you look at the front page and there's a picture of in this example a picture of President Obama giving a speech well apparently this technology can actually see what you're reading and link it to whatever that speech really was and you can actually be looking at a piece of paper but on that piece of paper somehow you can see instead of a photo you're seeing this video the actual speech go on in front of you it's absolutely incredible or you turn to the back of your newspaper and you see the weather and you know in the morning they give all the different all the different weather temperatures across the country well they change throughout the day so you pick it up halfway through the day and look at it well you know just holding on to it all of a sudden it changes the numbers on there for you so you're looking at a piece of paper with digital numbers on top of it showing you updated information it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and the final thing that he showed i believe was a um a ticket like a plane ticket and he's in the back seat of a cab and he's on his way and so he holds on to his plane ticket with his little technological thumb device and something pops up digitally on top of his paper stub and says 
delay 20 minutes it's just incredible and one thing that I thought was really awesome about what he's trying to do is even though it is a lot of technology he's trying to make it so we take the technology and we're not sitting in front of a computer using the technology we're not looking we're not sitting in front looking at a phone for the technology or pulling out a camera for the technology instead maybe we can use this technology to to better interact with each other and not have it be such a technology is all going through the wires and going through the systems and everything maybe this could actually help bring people closer together it's a fascinating video so um that was the end of that one so thanks for listening and i hope you all have a great day all right bye